Hey guys, so my name is Sandra. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share a couple of items I got in my recent Amazon haul. I'm going to go ahead and link my last Amazon haul video. In that video, you will actually see some cheap brush pens that I did, um, kind of like color swatches and a, a mini review on. And I did mention these two products, but I didn't really go into depth on them. So these are the Scribbles That Matter um, regular lined journal. They only offer one type and the fine liners. So for a while they had them on their website and on Amazon and then all of a sudden they were gone. And so recently I saw them again and I decided to pick them up. So the journal was $20 Canadian and the fine liners were 30. And I have always been a huge Scribbles That Matter fan. The first things I ever bought from the company was of course bullet journals and I pretty much have every color and then they did a re-release. I'm also going to link my last giveaway video. The giveaway itself is closed. Video was a haul on Amazon of all of the new Scribbles That Matter bullet journals that were re-released. So I'm not sure what exactly happened, but the bullet journals used to come in 100 GSM. It was either 100 or 120. Pretty sure it was 100 GSM. They had all sorts of different colors. There was the pro version with a plain cover. There was um, a doodle version, like an iconic version with a doodle cover. And then all of a sudden they were all gone. And then they released only 160 GSM paper. People were really upset about it. Some people loved it, but they were following the Archer and Olive trend. And then they had released these like insert notebooks were, which were meant to be able to pick and choose which one you wanted. But in Canada, all I could find was 160 and you could get these like cover, protective covers. And then just recently, I think it was like last two, maybe two months ago, they released five new colors so you could get it in charcoal, white, lavender, teal, or uh, bottle green. And they only come in the pro version, but you could get four different sizes. They had the A5, A6, B5, and B6. So I picked up a few of the A5s and a couple of the B5s because those are my favorite sizes. And the rest is history. So I also did purchase some brush markers from them. And I'll link that video too if I can for you. That was a brush pen review video. So a long time ago, I remember Cindy Gunthart Baldo had purchased brush pens from Scribbles That Matter, but they were different. They were in this like round case and they looked really cheap. And the ones I bought basically look like this. And they've got, I'm pretty sure there's 24, the same as the fine liners, but they're really good quality. And it's Probably, I know I mention always that Tombow and Zebra Ma liner brush pens are my favorite, but these are probably the same as Tombow, to be quite honest. Um, same quality, they're really good, and this has like a bullet tip at the end. The only reason why I would still choose Tombow is because they obviously have a bigger color selection, but that's the only reason. So now we're going to figure out if these fine liners are any good. The only other fine liners I really truly have are the Stabilo Point 88 and the Stadler Tri Plus fine liner. So we'll do like a little comparison and just kind of see um, what the differences are between all of them. So first we'll open up the journal. First, it does come in this beautiful black matte case. Like this is very nice. I love how this looks, how it feels, everything about it. It has scribbles that matter on gold in the front. The front cover comes off and inside you have the journal. So I had mentioned that they only have one type. It only comes in this brown color right now and it's an A5 ruled. It says it has two tables of contents, 202 pre-numbered pages, 100 GSM ivory paper, bookmark and attached pen loop. It's vegan leather, has rounded corners, and it lays flat and has an inner pocket. So basically, to me, it sounds exactly like the same exact quality you would expect from a Scribbles That Matter bullet journal. Uh, the only difference is you can only get it in the one color, and I kind of like this trim around the edge. It makes it look really expensive, and it feels different. It feels expensive. The feel of the leather, for lack of a better word, is very nice, and it feels heavy. I like that. I do like that it has a pen loop, and but another than that, it reminds me of a bullet journal by Scribbles That Matter, and the lines are... It is lined, but the lines are dotted. So I'm not sure if you can tell from this perspective. My most expensive 
looking journals would be my Peter Popper Press. If I have enough room, I'll link that video for you as well. That's a pretty popular video and I have uh, basically two journal hauls on my channel. Um, one is the Peter Popper Press, which I own a ton of, and then the other one is Miscellaneous Journals, which is also a really good video. So this will be added to my collection and I will eventually get good use out of it. So I'm impressed with the packaging and the quality, um, other than the fact, personally, I know a lot of people don't like leather. People are really into vegan leather because of not killing animals and stuff, but um, I like the quality of leather. Um, I like that it lasts forever. I like that it doesn't get wrecked as easy, and I just prefer it. But then again, I'm also a little biased because I grew up in a different era. My dad was older and he actually lived in the country like we lived in the country growing up and he worked with leather that was his hobby so he made saddles for people he made stirrups knife holders wallets everything you name it made out of leather and then my sister kind of inherited the hobby and now that's her pastime and she likes doing that i'll leave her information down below in the description box if you're curious but i'm a little biased because i just think um a good leather cover um it's the highest quality you can get. And that's why if you do go out and buy a leather purse or whatever, you're spending more money because it's high quality and it will last you forever. So in saying all that about the journal, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the fine liners. So the only video I've seen so far on these is from Cindy Guntart Baldo. She's one of my favorite YouTubers. And she said they didn't really compare that well to the Stadler because of the price point. So number one, you don't get that many colors. Number two, uh, some of hers, I think the tip was missing or something. I'd read a review that sometimes they're a little beat up or dried out even. And for $30, you're paying over a dollar per fine liner. And Stadler, you can get quite a bit cheaper. But let's go ahead and do the swatches and we'll take it from there. Okay guys, so <laughs> I have a couple of thoughts. So I was hoping against hope I wouldn't run into a dry marker, but I was not in luck today. The red, which is unfortunate because, you know, red gets a lot of use sometimes, um, is completely dried out. As you can see, I couldn't even write with it. So I'm sure that if I was to return it, it probably wouldn't be a, an issue, but it just sucks because I did wait forever for these pens. But looking at the tip, it's actually, like light or clear so even running some alcohol in there I don't think would work I don't even know if you can get them open oh no you can so I could try running some alcohol in there because that will help but they are a water-based fine liner I'm assuming let me just try checking here yeah they're water-based that's actually really pretty but um with alcohol markers anyway you can put alcohol in them and then they they work better so I could try maybe running some water in there and see if that helps. But um, in saying that, the colors are pretty, which is true. They're very bright. There are only 24 of them. And you'll see that the greens kind of take over the entire palette of color. So there are six greens. There are 24 markers. That means the green markers take up at least a quarter of the pack. So... I find that a little crazy. So I, I think it's crazy that a quarter of the pack is all green and I don't really know what the reason behind that is. And the other thing that drives me nuts 
is the numbering system. I don't know if it's the same on the brush pens. I just counted my brush pens and I have five greens in that pack as well, which is funny. Um, but the numbers do not coincide at all. So the only gray in this pack is 15 and this gray is 74. So yeah, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, I don't know where the numbers came from. It's not like it starts at one and, you know, goes to 24 or anything. So that's interesting. So also I completely lied and I said the only fine liners I had were the Stabilo 0.88 and the Statler Tri Plus fine liner. But I do actually have the Marvy Le Pen um, fine liners as well as the Zebra Click Art, which I guess are a type of fine liner, and then the Paper Mate flares. So let's compare the blue color in each of the ranges. So we already know that they're waterproof. Of course, I'm not going to do blending with these because that would not be the purpose for a fine liner. But let's compare these side by side. So we have the scribbles that matter, okay? So scribbles. That matter and we'll talk about the uh, pen barrel we'll talk about how it writes and all of that next we have the stabilo 0.88 and we should probably put what size they are because that's kind of an important factor when you're talking about how they write I'm pretty sure these are a 0.4 or they might be a 0.7 because they feel a little bit bigger. Let's see here. So the Statler, I'm pretty sure, are a 0.3 or a 0.4. Yeah, I think they're 0.4. But these say they're 0.4 and they feel different. Okay, so the issue I ran into my Papermate flare, it was dried out, so I'm just going to use a different color. Oh, that one's dried out too. Yeah, I've obviously had these for way too long. We'll use a gray. Let's see if this one's dried out. Nope. Okay. So let's talk about each of these pens. Um, we're talking about scribbles that matter. The one pen that they're the most similar to is obviously the Tri Plus Stadler because it has the same type of shape, the triangle shape. So it is comfortable to hold because your fingers just fit nice around the triangle shape. The Stadler one is a little bit more rounded, whereas the Scribbles That Matter is a bit more triangular. Um, they're about the same height. The lids are almost the same, but the Scribbles That Matter has this weird slant to it. Uh, doesn't really affect anything but the lids are exactly the same and they appear to write the same as well which is nice like they have a good writing um, ability like it's it's not uncomfortable to write um, the cap stays on it's not like it doesn't have a satisfying click but it does just kind of sit there and when you put the lid on it does snap the Statler I guess kind of the same thing and that has a snap as well so the one that writes like the smaller I guess than a 0.4 um, but it is a 0.4 because it says right on the barrel is the 0.88 that's this one here um, I've never had an issue with these uh, so I can't there's not really anything bad to say about them but yeah they have a different shaped barrel it's more like a hexagon or I don't know heptagon heptagon I'm not sure um, then the Marvy Le Pen, I like them, but because they're completely smooth and they're short, I find that they're more difficult to write with. 
but I really like how that writes. And I guess the Zebra Click Art one you can't really compare because it's not really a fine liner. It's more of like a marker, which is why it has a bigger um, point to it. So we could kind of just scratch that one because it's not really in the, the running, I suppose. And I guess the last one would be my Paper Mate Flares. So personally, I don't like Paper Mate Flares. Uh, first of all, they dry out like crazy. And second of all, I find them really uncomfortable to write with because of the way the barrel is. You'd think that it would be ergonomic because of this like thing here, but it's not. And I think my favorite ones to write with would probably be these three here. And to be honest, narrow it down. I'd have to say that both of them are really, really good. Um, I like Scribbles That Matter. I like the packaging, to be honest. Um, this isn't something that would win me over because, again, that one color kind of messed it for the rest of them. It was dried out. Um, and that kind of makes me a little angry because, you know, you pay good money, you wait forever for the product to arrive, and you don't need a dried out pen, right? Like, you're paying for it. It should be brand new. So... Um, the thing I like about them is that the barrel of the pen is matte black and it has the stripes of the color going along each of the corners, which is really cool. I just, I like the aesthetic of it. And also the packaging that it comes in is also really nice. This is the same packaging that the, the brush pens came in, which I really like. And it's also kind of a space saver because I've received packs of fine liners or brush pens before that were in a 24 pack and they were a lot bigger than this little tin of markers. So I like that they've really kind of crunched it down. There's no wasted space. Um, the only thing that kind of pisses me off is the red marker. And I guess, you know, the, the all the amount of greens don't really bug me because I think every other color is represented. I don't think that, like, I wouldn't really want more yellows or anything, but I think they could have made the purples a bit different because they're very, very similar. Uh, these two here. And I would have liked maybe a different pink, <laughs> but I'm getting a little picky now. But overall, um, I guess those are the downsides, but I do really like Scribbles That Matter. I'm a little biased because I have loved them for such a long time over any other brands of anything. So I'm trying to be reasonable and fair and pointing out the, the negative aspects as well but I really do love the packaging. So that is definitely probably why I would keep them and I would use them probably more likely than any of the other fine liners. And occasionally I do like using fine liners in my journals. Generally my favorite pen to go to is my ballpoint pens instead of gel pens. Gel pen is for bullet journal, ballpoint pen are for my regular journals, but sometimes I'll switch to a fine liner as well because I just like the, the color selection and that's it. So I hope you guys liked this mini review on these two items. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Did you buy these? Have you experienced any issues with them? And yeah, check out this journal because for 20 bucks, I mean, that's not bad. It's the same price I pay for my Peter Popper Press journals. So give this video a huge like if you enjoyed it. Also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And again, click on that bell button to be notified every time I upload a new video. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye now. Yeah.